Uh, both of you have been great resources for this committee as we continue to develop and refine our policies towards Iran. So thank you both for again appearing. Um, I personally opposed the Iran deal because I did not believe it would ultimately prevent the regime from developing a nuclear weapon and would instead embolden the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism while diminishing our leverage to stop them. And even though members of this committee wound up in different places on the agreement itself, we continue to pursue vigorous oversight in a bipartisan fashion consistent with a mandate from the Iran Nuclear Agreement Review Act. One year after the agreement was concluded, the Iranian regime remains as serious a threat to our national security as ever before. The Obama administration readily admits this, that Iran's ongoing support for terrorism, repeated ballistic missile violations, human rights abuses, and other destabilizing activities in the region continue. To restore our resolve in our Iran policy, um, with others, I'm introducing a bipartisan uh, piece of legislation today with other committee members that mandates tough sanctions for ballistic missile activity, terrorism, and other threatening behavior. Um, I plan to work, as always, with everyone here on this legislation and ensure that U.S. policy is not held hostage by Iran's threats to walk away from the nuclear agreement. The need for this legislation is clear. Whether or not Iran is complying with a nuclear deal, their hostile intentions are clear. Just this week, the U.S. military released photos of the IRGC Navy's provocative actions around U.S. Navy sh uh, ships. Last week, the Germans released an intelligent report outlining Iran's clandestine attempts to procure illegal proliferation-sensitive procurement activities throughout 2015. Also last week, Angela Merkel warned of Iran's unabated rocket program. Iran also recently attempted to purchase five tons of carbon fiber to build centrifuge rotors for which they have no need. Meanwhile, Iran has announced charges against four, du four dual nationals and foreigners, one of whom is an American citizen. They have also doubled down on the support for the Assad regime and Hezbollah, while Iranian forces are currently assisting on the ground to encircle the city of Aleppo. I could go on about their use of commercial airlines to support terrorism, illicit financing, financial activities, cyber threats, and more, but I'm sure that this is going to be covered fully in this hearing. I think it is worth noting that there is broad bipartisan support for new Iran legislation. I know both of our witnesses would support such legislation. Mr. Nephew, who played a prominent role in negotiating the Iran deal, wrote in his testimony today that, is, that it is reasonable to consider new legislation that would impose penalties on those who support Iran's development of and trade in missiles and conventional arms, as well as violations of Iranian human rights. We have crafted a bill that does just that, and I hope to build even broader bipartisan support for the legislation. So today I hope our witnesses can help us in this effort to push back against Iran's continued aggression and recommend ways the Congress can remain constructively engaged. And with that, uh, again, I want to thank you for appearing here and again turn over to my friend, Ranking Member Senator Cardin.